One of the great things about being an automotive writer is test driving the future. Nissan invited a number of us to the Las Vegas International Speedway to drive this, a Leaf Plus. Uh, don't be disappointed. This one's more than just decals and fender flares. It's one of a kind. It has a prototype all-wheel drive system with special chassis control electronics and unique rear suspension. Nissan has dubbed the technology E-Force because uh, the marketing people insist on a clever name and spelling. So if you think you can run out and buy a Nissan Leaf with all-wheel drive in the near future, uh, maybe, maybe not. Nissan is very careful to say this is just a one-of-a-kind prototype and the system may or may not end up in future product. It's uh, not often they let us kind of out of the office to be able to explain kind of some up and coming new technology to everyone. At the information session, Nissan engineers explained they were after three dynamics. One is a comfortable drive and ride for all. So the concept here is um, minimizing body movement in the car and stop and go traffic, avoiding fatigue, motion sickness, etc. Um, the second is superior handling. So driving through kind of um, very, you know, turn, winding roads, being able to accelerate in and out of the apex of turns, essentially following the driver's intention for handling pleasure, as well as having a very smooth uh, performance for all ability of drive, uh, type of drivers. And finally, I'm sure we're very familiar with the winter time in the U.S., um, confidence on any road surface. So the concept here is to relax and enjoy your driving scenario, even on snowy uh, roads, uh, rainy days, wet surfaces, etc. Porsche does not offer a one-pedal driving mode on its electric Taycan because head bob and toss is a byproduct. The Nissan control system is supposed to reduce that. You're experiencing less pitching or driving while decelerating and less pitching ex ex with uh, acceleration as well. The intention here is that the vehicle posture stays very flat when slowing down and your head isn't kind of moving away and back towards the headrest. E-Force isn't just all-wheel drive. The system includes a four-channel torque vectoring brake system. So again, the idea here is to distribute the torque to the front and rear to maximize the grip of the wheels um, and according to the road surface and the vehicle situation. So in this case, braking is individually controlled for each of the four wheels. Keep in mind, Nissan is not spilling all of the details on E-Force. There are two cars on the tarmac, a production Leaf Plus as a control and the prototype E-Force car, which is right-hand drive. It gets a unique screen to show what the system is doing and a kill switch if things go horribly wrong. Uh, hoping not to need that. First, the front drive production car. Okay, so we are now at the wheel. Keep in mind, there are no affordable all-wheel drive electric cars on the market, so if Nissan can keep costs down in a production version, it would be a huge win. There are four parts to the course. First up is straight line acceleration. Floor it here. Floor it. Off the accelerator after, at the green cones. Floor it down. Next, a section where we accelerate and then coast to induce head bob, which is something that contributes to a passenger's car sickness. As you can see, the car always, yeah, as almost all the cars will do, the small pitch. Yep. Then there's a slalom course to demonstrate the improvement of the all-wheel drive and electronic chassis stability control. 60, maintain. Maintain, build up a little bit more. No. Speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. Okay, easy, easy, easy. Perfect. See. Decent for a front driver, but it is, it is. Remember, the Leaf's heavy battery pack is in the floor, so the center of gravity is low. And finally, my favorite part, a wetted down J-turn section where the engineers turn the electronics on and off to demonstrate why electronics are our friends. Increase speed, increase speed. With the standard Leafs Dynamics fresh in my inner ears database, I head out with Eric Bringert in the E-Force car. First challenge, right-hand drive, but uh, let's do it. One benefit is good old-fashioned acceleration. Okay, so that was faster than the standard Leaf. Absolutely. Yeah. Twin motor versus a single motor setup. Yeah. 
The single motor Leaf topped out at around 90 kilometers per hour. The E-Force, 110, a clear benefit. Next up. What I want you to focus on when you're driving on this scene is your four aft motion, kind of your head and body motion. Okay. And the best way to do that is to keep your head against the headrest while you're driving in this scene. This is accelerating to 40 kilometers per hour, then coasting down to 20 to check the difference in dynamics. So 40, hold, lift off. Yeah, there's definitely a better body dynamic. It's flatter. Yeah. And so that's definitely improved. So that that's the, the whole idea is we're trying to show that, uh, you know, from um, it's almost from um, more of a passenger perspective, right? So when you're driving the car, you won't, you know, when you're going to accelerate, you know, when the car is going to decelerate and, you know, having that, that pitch motion, some people get car sick if they're not, you know, driving the car, they're not focused. Yeah, they don't know so that should help on that. Right. My wife would appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now we're on uh, section three, which is the slalom course. The first one turn. is with all wheel drive off to simulate the current leaf. Accelerate up to 70. Accelerate, hold. Okay, and slow down. Once we reach these double orange gates here, we're gonna make a right turn and go back around again and repeat the same course. So that time was with the chassis control system off. That's how the current leaf performs. So will that put it into a front drive mode and eliminate the rear motor? So it's a, yeah, it represents a single motor setup like the front, the same thing as the leaf front motor. And is that how E-Force will eventually be set up? You can actually kind of choose between efficiency and using only a front motor? So as far as from a technical point of view, that's you're going to have to talk to Jonathan about that. I am the, uh, the course guru here. So. Okay. FYI, since it's in the development stage, Nissan was mum on that. As far as running the slalom in E-Force mode. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn chassis control on. Okay. And go ahead and run through the same course. It's a big improvement, though hard to know what the unique rear suspension is doing to help out. The focus is gonna be on steering precision, uh, line tracing, body control. The additional screen shows what the brakes at each corner are doing. Accelerate. Not that a driver will be looking at it during hard maneuvers. Okay. That was noticeably easier. Yeah. Makes a difference. Right. So, you know, people think all-wheel drive is just for snow. Uh, <laughs> so it's well, not. And and how this system works, in a sense, is you have the you have the torque that's varied between the front and rear motors, and then you have independent braking at each wheel. So this is how this E-Force technology is, is showing what it's capable of doing in an all-wheel drive system. So it is dual motor, but the torque vectoring is essentially front. brake torque vectoring. Correct. Finally, the fun part, a wet 30 meter J turn under full throttle to show off how all wheel drive and brake torque vectoring together can make driving in slippery conditions much more relaxing. It's kind of representing wet, slippery road like wintertime conditions. So what we're gonna do in this section is we're gonna drive this three times. The first time is with the uh, chassis control on. Yep. Second time is with the chassis control off to represent the current leaf performance. And then the third time is back on again. So 30 kph. There are people that believe they can drive better without these so-called electronic nannies. Uh, doubtful. So now we're going to do it in the off condition. Okay. Maybe if you're Canon Block, but in some situations, I have to believe even he'd find it helpful to wring more performance out of a car with something like E-Force on. Okay. Decelerate. <laughs> Not as elegant, <laughs> right. that is for sure. But really, this is designed to assist your spouse or kids who aren't expert pilots. Yeah, you were able to recognize the difference between oh, the two? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, so now we're turning the system back on. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> it's about improving the drive experience, keeping everyone safe, and reducing car sickness. Uh, yeah. yeah, much, much, much better control. Right. So, and, and that's the goal, basically, of the, the Section 3 and Section 4 is to showcase the, the line tracing capability of this E-Force technology. You have much much better control of the chassis, your steering precision is better, your body control. Um, this is kind of the future of our technology and we're trying to showcase this is this is what lies in store for the future of our of our EV vehicles. This is what we're pushing for. The added acceleration is a plus. Imagine this in a performance car. 
Hope you got something out of my look at the E4 system from Nissan. Again, the company is being coy about which vehicle it will or will not be in, but I have to believe it will be the production version of the Aria. Remember, click subscribe and notifications if you like these videos. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.